good evening everybody and uh, welcome to this portion ma of 2022 which is the first portion ma after the pandemics waned our idea today is to yeah. take the viewers through the work that we are doing at sitara iit bombay in the center of excellence for child nutrition we call it chinu but it's not just child nutrition, it is child nutrition and health. And we are also looking at certain issues of public health on a larger perspective. When it comes to child malnutrition in our country, uh, one of the views that we strongly hold, that this is not an individual silos work, but it's more like a teamwork. And to use the cricketing analogy, I am a bit notorious for doing that. Removing child under, under nutrition is almost like scoring a given target of runs in the overs, 50 overs you may say. The trouble is, if it is a urban child or a rural child, from a better off household, the runs that you are chasing are less, say 250. But if it is a tribal girl child in a rural area, then the, the runs to be scored becomes much higher, something like 350. And the second thing that is important there is, you also have to worry about what kind of outfield you have. So is the village of defecation free? And in this entire teamwork, the story begins from the pregnant mother, or you could even go back a two steps. It begins from the adolescent girl. Without much ado, we will present to you a short six minute video which was made by our students is uh, rather uh, dated today, three, four years old, but it's still worth uh, looking at the lessons. So we'll have a short presentation and then I'll come back to you to go through the journey we have made in the country from NFHS 4 to NFHS 5. But that story will be told with certain nuances and differences. But before that, the video. And this is cricket match between CDPO and child malnutrition. Tanakpur mein aapka swagat hai. Yahaan baal kuposhan ke khilaaf match hai. Ye hai humare kaptaan CDPO. और ये है उनकी वाइस कप्तान सुपरवाइजर पर समस्या है कि कुपोषण ने इनके सामने एक बड़ी चुनौती खड़ी कर दी है चलो चलो गुरुजी के पास चलते हैं हम्म समस्या तो है पर कुपोषण ने इतना बड़ा स्कोर खड़ा कैसे कर दिया जरूर बॉलिंग ढीला होगा जरूर कैच छोड़े होंगे बच्चों का वजन नहीं किया माताओं की देखभाल नहीं की टीकाकरण ढीला रह गया बच्चों को सही आहार नहीं दिया क्षमा करें गुरुजी, गुरु लेकिन, लेकिन अब क्या, क्या करें? करें? चलो कोई बात नहीं कुपोषण को हराना तो होगा ही पहला बैट्समैन कौन है गुरुजी? अरे शुरुआत गर्भवती माँ से। क्या उसकी उम्र सही है कद छोटा और वजन कम तो नहीं है यानी घड़ा कच्चा तो नहीं है अरे गुरुजी, गुरु ये तो, तो देखा, देखा ही नहीं जल्दी जाओ जाके सर्वे कराओ परिणाम अच्छे नहीं है ये विकेट, ये विकेट तो गया।, गया चलो कोई बात नहीं एक विकेट गिरने से मैच थोड़े ही ना हारते हैं अगला बैट्समैन कौन है गुरुजी? गर्भवती की करो देखभाल 
वजन बढ़े उसका नौ मास कितना वजन बढ़ना चाहिए गुरुजी? जी दस किलो हाँ कम से कम दस किलो तभी तो बने की बात अरे गर्भवती को टीका लगवाया क्या उसने खाना ठीक से खाया क्या उसे आराम करने दिया गोरी जी बच्चे का वजन तीन किलो से ऊपर है शाबाश बस समझो पचास रन बन गए पर सावधान रहो वजन अच्छा हो तो सोना नहीं वजन कम हो तो रोना नहीं अब बच्चे को माँ का पहला गाढ़ा पीला दूध पिला पोषण और औषधि से भरपूर इसे यू मत गवाना विकेट मत खोना और ये लगा चौका और अब बारी है छह महीने स्तनपान की हाँ बस माँ का दूध और कुछ नहीं देखो कैसा स्वस्थ है बच्चा और ये लगा छक्का पर अब अगले बारह महीने संभल कर यह पावर प्ले है बच्चे को माँ के दूध के साथ साथ ऊपर का खाना भी खिलाना है पर संभल कर दस्त न होने पाए वजन बढ़ते रहना चाहिए घर में ओ रखो अगर दस्त हो तो ओ पिलाते रहो और बच्चे को सारे टीके मिले क्या पर गुरुजी अभी भी वजन धीरे धीरे बढ़ रहा है अरे बच्चे के पेट में तो कीड़े हैं और वो हट्टे कट्टे हो रहे हैं अरे बच्चे को कीड़ों की दवा पिलाई या नहीं चलो चलो जल्दी करो शाबाश अब हम जीत के करीब आ गए हैं मैं थोड़ा और गांव में घूम कर आता हूँ चलो हम बताते हैं कैसे दूर भगाना है कुपोषण को सुनो सुनो, सुनो। सबसे पहले माँ का पहला गाढ़ा पीला दूध बच्चा होने पर एक घंटे के अंदर जरूर दे फिर छह महीने तक केवल माँ का दूध ही बच्चे को दे छह महीने से चौबीस महीने बच्चे को सही मात्रा और सही प्रकार का पोषण दे आसपास की साफ सफाई खाना खाने और खिलाने से पहले अपने हाथ धोना न भूले आयन और विटामिन ए की दवाई के साथ कृमि नाशक की दवा भी समय समय पर देते रहे बच्चे की बीमारी के समय और उसके बाद बच्चे को पोषक आहार दे अति कुपोषित बच्चे को सही पोषक आहार और सही समय पर उसकी देखभाल करे अभी दोगे अगर कुमारिका के पोषण पर ध्यान तो नहीं होना पड़ेगा उसे परेशान गर्भवती और स्तनदा माता का संतुलित आहार बनेगा शिशु के उज्जवल भविष्य का आधार इन दस बातों पर करो अमल और होगा बच्चों का भविष्य उज्जवल वाह वाह अब बच्चे के हाथ में कार्ड थमाओ जैसे हम जीते वैसे सब जीतो हाँ, हम जीते धन्यवाद so i hope you enjoyed this video and you would agree with me that this is a cricket match against small nutrition which we must win win by playing as a team together win by not focusing on our individual half centuries but overall victory of the team and also be careful about the playing conditions the bounce of the pitch whether the outfield is slow we'll come back to it in our next episode
So please watch this space. Thank you very much. Hi, my name is Sarthak Gaurav. I'm a faculty in the economics area at the Shailesh J. Mehta School of Management at IIT Bombay. I'm an associate faculty at the Ashant Desai Center for Policy Studies at IIT Bombay, and I'm also affiliated to the IIT Bombay Nutrition Group at Sitara. My research has broadly been in the areas of development economics and behavioral economics, wherein I try to understand how households respond to shocks. Talking about shocks, I try to understand how the response, as well as the strategies that households develop over generations to cope with idiosyncratic or individual or household level shocks, as well as aggregate or village and countrywide shocks like the recent pandemic that all of us experienced. In the context of the work that I've been doing with the IIT Bombay Nutrition Group, there are three interesting research projects among the many that I'd like to talk about briefly. In the first project, we're trying to understand how the currently available public data on health and nutrition, including the different surveys that are around, like the CNNS, as well as the NFHS, or any other relevant survey that has information on different experiences of individuals, the children, the mothers, at different stages of the life cycle as well, and try to have a repository of these publicly available data in the form of meaningful dashboards. So one of the most important dashboards that I have been working with the group is nutritionindia.info in collaboration with UNICEF and other stakeholders such as the Women and Child Development Department and in the context of health and family welfare related aspects with the Ministry of Health and Family Welfare for the HMIS analyzer. So in terms of the broader understanding of how do stakeholders make sense of the data that is already out there in the public domain at a certain level of granularity, that means data could be available at the country level, it could be available at the state level, at the district level, at the sub-district level, and in certain contexts like HMIS at the facility level, if it is accessible to the public. The objective of these dashboards is particularly in the context of there being instruments to negotiate with policymakers in terms of what are the demands of the end users, the individuals who are of relevance here, particularly mothers, pregnant women, infants and children. Since we're largely talking about the relevance of the IIT Bombay Nutrition Group's work with the public data that we have been able to concentrate in the context of what we call the data for policy initiative, wherein there is an importance of improving the statistical system, be it the health system as well as the administrative data that is available in India. It is important to understand how the data can be made available to researchers and analysts and other stakeholders in an analysis ready format or what we call analysis ready data. The other major initiative that I have been working with, the IIT Bombay Nutrition Group at Sitara, has been in the space of understanding the effects of IYCF interventions. So when you talk about a specific IYCF intervention, or this is infant and young child feeding interventions, IIT Bombay's health spoken tutorials in the free and open source space of FOSS is a very interesting intervention that we'd be trying to find the effects of. So one of the studies that I'm currently working on with the group is in Nandurbar district of Maharashtra, where there is this chronic issue of malnutrition and severe acute malnutrition or SAM and we're trying to understand scientifically whether the interventions that are designed to make available information about effective breastfeeding practices and nutritional information to pregnant women and mothers at different stages, whether these have causal impacts over a long term. And in terms of the third related work that I've been doing, with the IIT Bombay Nutrition Group's researchers and fellows and other staff, 
has been in the context of health GIS. So by GIS I mean Geospatial Information Science. At IIT Bombay we have recently set up a Geospatial Information Science and Engineering Hub or GIS Hub of which I am a co-PI. The objective of the Health GIS initiative is broadly in the context of having an SDI for geospatial data related to health at whatever the level of granularity one could really come. One important challenge that the team has been facing in the context of having this analysis worked out is the policy briefs that need to be prepared frequently for relevant stakeholders and that too we also need to understand the effect of these policy briefs being given out to the stakeholders. I believe through these broader initiatives that the researchers and the scholars at IIT Bombay, Sitara's nutrition group have been working on in particular is going to have a long-term impact in terms of how the interventions that the government agencies as well as the non-governmental organizations have been taking up over the years is going to be impactful or not and this is an important initiative in that regard. Lastly, I would also like to comment on an important aspect of the engagement that I have been having with IIT Bombay's nutrition group. The objective of the nutrition group was also partly educational, partly impactful in terms of the stakeholder engagements. I believe that the human capability investments that IIT Bombay's nutrition group has done over the years is absolutely fundamental in the context of the objectives of the portion mark that we have been celebrating and this is the fifth year for the portion that the government of India has been initiated. We believe the new breed of scholars and analysts and policy experts, if I may use the term, have really come to understand the grassroots issues, have understood the challenges with publicly available data, understand the limitations how data could be used for policy making. So that rare breed of fellows that the IIT Bombay's nutrition group at Sitara has been supporting is going to be an important contribution to India's initiatives to tackle the chronic challenges of malnourishment or other related issues of imbalances in nutrition. With this, I wish all of you a very happy portion mark and look forward to greater engagement with her group. Thank you. Namaskar. My name is Digvijay Shinde. I'm uh, currently a PhD scholar at Sitara IIT Bombay and also working as a consultant program officer at Maharashtra's Health and Nutrition Mission, the Rajmata Jizav Mission. So I am an undergrad with production engineering. Uh, after engineering, BTEC, completing my BTEC in production engineering, I understood what I don't want to do with my life. And uh, then I came across the uh, MTEC Technology and Development Program at Sitara IIT Bombay. And then I got into it. Uh, post, uh, while, while doing the MTech program here, I came across the course by Professor Satish Agnihotri, sir, which dealt with malnutrition and how do we understand the issues of malnutrition in India. Uh, very interesting course. That is when my interest in child malnutrition first began. Uh, it became solidified in my uh, course called Field Stay. Uh, we called TD609 here. Uh, I did my field stay. You have to stay in a village and study the village for nine weeks or so. I stayed in a tribal uh, village in Palkar district in Wada block. Uh, uh, so that was the first time I came across, you know, what is Anganwadi, what the children in Anganwadi are, how do we measure malnutrition, so on and so forth. Uh, I was very, uh, I must admit, uh, slightly sad to see the situation of malnutrition firsthand. Uh, the place where I stayed was not even like 90 kilometers from our IIT's main gate and it was a national hotspot, so to say, for child malnutrition related deaths. Uh, th that is how the, uh, you know, motivation began and in the next semester again, I work closely on nutrition and agriculture linkage as part of my MTech project. Uh, solid footing in, so to say, malnutrition began after uh, my MTech, wherein I was awarded Sitara UNICEF Fellowship in Nutrition. Uh, my broad area of work was again 
inspired by you know my professor satish agnihotri sir where how do we really understand the problem of malnutrition in localized context of a district and tailor a suitable solution for it so that's how i began uh, selecting palghar district as my area of work i stayed for about 9 or 10 months in palghar district that time interestingly palghar district was facing another challenge of uh, you know managing csr and corporates and ngos too many ngos in palghar uh, interestingly i got an opportunity to work with ceos of zila parishad to uh, help them in the words of ceo that time uh, create an equitable platform for distribution of incoming csr or ngo related activities in the district uh, that's how a csr cell concept was born in palghar uh, i worked on it uh, during that time i got opportunity to work with unicef state office also the chief minister's office here in maharashtra post my completion of one year fellowship uh, unicef mumbai onboarded me as a state consultant my designation was uh, state consultant for data systems management for cmm and poshan abhiyan uh, that is when i got more of broad experience in other districts of maharashtra uh, that time uh, we were working with six districts administration in maharashtra many tribal districts and uh, otherwise as well uh my real close interaction with the government began after this one year consultancy with unicef wherein a uh, new secretary for women and child development came kundan ma'am and she wanted to create a, a wcd task force at state level of maharashtra and she asked unicef to uh, you know sort of support uh, it with through the rajmata ji's mission and uh, that's how i got involved with wcd task force uh since then it has been an amazing journey got to work on lot of projects with uh, big impact on uh, state policy a few of them were uh, so i i can recollect three four important projects that i got to work since past three years this were uh, firstly was no your district project which again we worked with uh, sitara department wherein we took the the basic fundamental challenge was lot of data was coming now at state level because of digitization uh, that was brought in by uh, poshan abhiyan that we first time we got lot of digital data at state level and how do we make more sense of it how do we help decision makers at various level uh, take decision based upon this data uh, what kind of new visualization can be tried out and things like that so on and so forth so that was how uh, no your district project was born uh we could work on it till the time icds cas was functioning as a primary source of mis and department uh after that i got to work upon a, a project called the uh, urban icds restructuring in maharashtra which was again a, a large scale project uh, wherein we uh, studied the challenges of uh, urban malnutrition in maharashtra and which is data has been talking about it since round after round uh we uh, two public uh, policy gr government resolutions were drafted one was uh, published as well uh wherein about we geo located about 25000 urban anganwadis using open source platform through field functionaries i was uh, leading this project i was involved in training our field functionaries designing the questionnaires uh, creating overall strategy for the project with the support of icds of course uh so Uh, this project lasted for about 10 11 months and it took one more year to uh, get approvals from other departments so over the last three years i really got uh, a good experience of working within the system uh, within the government system and uh, learn from them uh, very recently i was involved in two three more projects one was geotagging all rural anganwadis in maharashtra for a bharat net project again we used the same open source platform a uh, cobo tool to geo locate all boat almost now 85000 rural anganwadi so this completed uh, uh, the whole geo tagging of all 1 lakh 10000 anganwadi across maharashtra i was also involved in uh, strengthening the mis system uh, we we did assessment of all anganwadis 1 lakh 10000 so anganwadis in maharashtra infrastructure assessment and outcome uh, indicators assessment for sake of review of uh, field functionaries uh and very recently i started working on uh, jointly working on a project called maharashtra migration tracking system maha mts wherein uh, we are tracking the we are creating a platform to enable service delivery as well as monitoring of uh, distress driven seasonal migrants uh, in within the state 
so uh, yeah so this was happening side by side and by encouragement of my professor i joined in uh, as a phd scholar in 2019 again at sitara uh, currently i am pursuing phd here uh, so my broad area of research is interdepartmental convergence and specifically urban and icds convergence i am looking at and uh, broadly how to effectively create a data driven decision support system to help decision makers within the government system to tackle child malnutrition so yeah it's been an amazing journey and i look forward to the future to you know to test of my part thank you